God bless you. God bless you all for watching. God bless you. Feel free to share the video. Invite your friends and family members so they can watch and be blessed. So I have a message today. It's, the title is Wandering Thoughts. I know you'll be wondering. <laughs> um, but I got this message yesterday while I was in church praying. God bless you all. God bless you all. I think, um, I don't know what happened. I was praying and on the other one and I just opened my eyes and the video was off. God bless you. Feel free to share the video. Invite your friends. And you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. So, I don't know what was happening in the other video, but you know, the devil sometimes he just has his tricky ways, you know. Maybe the prayer was too much. Mm -hmm. Cause the moment I opened my eyes, I didn't see the video again. The prayer was too much for the devil. He couldn't handle it. But I'm back again. So the topic that I have today. Let me lower this music a little bit. The topic that I have for today is called, um, it's titled, Wandering Thoughts. God bless you, princess. Don't worry, you know, no matter how, how many times the devil tries to cut off my video, I'll come right back. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. But yeah, Wandering Thoughts. So yesterday I went to, um, <coughs> I went to prayer meeting in church and, um, while we were praying, it's like my thoughts I was just about I was speaking in tongues right I was speaking in tongues serious speaking in tongues and all of a sudden it's like I, I started thinking of something else or something it's like my, my mind was wandering and the Holy Spirit like got me back it's like stop that what are you doing he said don't you know that that's a trick of the devil to to make you lose focus like so that you don't get blessed i was like wow he started teaching me on how you know how some people they come to church or or maybe they are watching this video right now or maybe a man of god is preaching to them or maybe somebody's praying for them and they're really focused on that prayer and then all of a sudden like you know you they close their eyes you're saying you're praying for them they're saying in jesus name amen and then while you're praying all of a sudden it's like their mind starts to wonder and they're now thinking of oh man i don't know how i'm gonna pay my light bill or like they're not saying anything they're, they're still you think you're still praying for them but the person you're praying for is no longer there the person is gone like the person thought is wondering or their mind is wondering they are thinking of a bill or they're thinking of what they're about to do after this prayer or they're thinking of something that happened yesterday or they're thinking of and then before you know even when you say sometimes you may say in jesus name they may not even say amen because they're not even paying attention anymore so that prayer may not even work because the devil has succeeded in distracting them do you see where i'm coming from sometimes you see people come to church they're looking at the pastor they're sitting down the pastor is preaching they're looking at the pastor but when you ask them at the end of the church, what was the pastor saying? They'll say, mm, I don't know. They were never paying attention to that pastor. They were just looking at him, but their thoughts was like their mind was all over the place. They were not, they don't even know the title of the message. They don't even know what he said. <laughs> they have no idea. The devil succeeded in removing their attention from something that would have blessed them. <laughs> this is one of the tricks of the devil people may not see it as a trick but it's actually a major trick because it's your mind he is playing with he is messing with your mind it's just like you call me to pray for you and i'm praying for you and all of a sudden from nowhere at that time that i want to pray for you to start speaking in tongues or whatever that's the same time you start thinking of the guy that you want to go sleep with 
Like, I don't even know that's what you're thinking. I'm busy here praying. Oh, Father, Lord, give this person the gift of tongues. But you, you are thinking and you are just fantasizing of how you're going to uh, sleep with this man. And then at the end, you say amen. And you're not even speaking in tongues. And you're like, well, I thought I was going to speak in tongues when you started praying. How would I know why you didn't speak in tongues? Your thoughts were so... All over the place. Your mind was not even in this prayer. You were thinking of something else. How would you speak in tongues? I'm just giving you an example. And this thing happens a lot. Like even the video. Some people will watch the video. As I'm doing this video now. Guess what? Some people are watching it. But they're not happy. They're worried. How am I going to pay this rent tomorrow? They're looking at the video. But they're not hearing anything I'm saying. Because they are wondering how they will pay their bill tomorrow. They are worried about their bill. At the end of the day, I may even pray, receive your miracle money. They will not even hear me say it. Because their thoughts, their mind, their eyes are looking at the video. But their mind is somewhere else. And they did not even say amen. I don't know why my video keeps interrupting. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's my internet or something. Maybe it's my internet, but I'm still here. You know, somebody say very true. It happens to me a lot. See, whenever the Holy Spirit gives me a message to come give, it means it happens a lot. It does. Like, yesterday he told me, I came online twice, right? Actually, three times because one of the videos cut off and I had to do the second part of it. But the second one was about lying. And funny enough, that video... When I, the Holy Spirit made me come out to do that video, I didn't even think it was going to have that much impact as it had. A lot of people were messaging me saying, oh, this, this you were talking about me that I, I don't know. Sometimes I just lie. I lie and I don't see it as a big deal. Just little lie here and there. But now that you're talking about it, now that I watch the video, I, I, I see that it's not a good thing. Like These are little, little things the devil can use to get us off, off track. Like, how can you come to church for prayers and while they're praying you your mind is not in the prayer session you're like you're thinking of how where you're gonna go to after this prayer session oh i'll stop by my friend's place oh no i'll go to the market and buy the fish to cook oh no i'm just gonna do this like you are supposed to be focused on the prayer that you came for but instead of you to focus you're even thinking oh do i even have enough money to stop at this store do i wondering your mind is all over the place. And then you will complain. You will say, oh, I didn't even get blessed. Jeff. What did they even pray about today? Today's prayer was boring. I didn't enjoy it. How can you enjoy it? You were not there. You were physically there, but you were not there. Spiritually and everything, you were somewhere else. Your mind was where you want to be. It's a plan of the devil because the devil knows how powerful that prayer is or he knows how powerful that sermon is so what he's gonna do is to make sure he will find a way that you will not pay attention to that sermon and it will start messing with your mind it will start flashing things to you that are not even necessary at that time like how can you come to the house of the lord praying for him to bless you and you're in his house and you're thinking of how your life is messed up and how you're not blessed. But you are in front of the Lord's. You're in the Lord's house where you came to be prayed for. But instead of you to focus on the Lord and pray and say, Lord, I'm here because I want you to bless me. Instead, you come in pres presence of the Lord and you are saying, ah, my life is so messed up. I can't believe it. But you came here to see how your life can be fixed. But instead of doing what you came here for, you are just lamenting and you're just complaining you're just <laughs> and before you know it the whole two hours that you you spend there you didn't even benefit from it you even you're even gonna go home worse because you came home worrying about things that you didn't need at that time why do i always say focus you know when i start the video sometimes even the one that i did earlier i had to delete that one but I say just worship the Lord, just worship the Lord, just focus, just focus. Because some people, they connect so easily the moment they are focused. Like, even when you are worshipping, you are worshipping, like this song that is playing in the background. If you take your mind off any distraction, anything, and you focus, and the song gets into your heart, 
you will start speaking in tongues before you know you are connected before you know you're crying everything is just because your mind is here but if you're like listening to this song and you're like i don't really like this song i think i like the other song better yeah that guy that sang the other song <laughs> your your mind is already wondering <laughs> you will not even see yourself getting you'll be wondering how everybody is connecting and seeing jesus and all this thing that you are not seeing jesus because you're not focused your mind is not here you're thinking of something else and it's a trick of the devil because he knows that he cannot pull you away from there since you're already there you're already there he said well she's already there let me see a way to take her away spiritually her physical body may be there but i'll see how she will disconnect from it let me give her something to think about right now boom before you know you're thinking about something why, why did that thing just suddenly come to you all of a sudden? Like, why did that thought come to you all of a sudden? Just right when you open your mouth to pray. All right, when... And some people, they've told me, Princess, I can't pray. Sometimes I'm in my closet to pray. And the next thing I start thinking of is sleep. Or the next thing I start thinking of is yawning or I'm coughing or I'm tired or something. Or my mind starts thinking of my life and how things have been... Or some people, their own is fear. Fear comes to their mind. They start thinking of fear. They are afraid. Like, why do these things come right when you are about to get closer to God? Or when you are about to... Can't you see? It's not right. It's the devil. Anything that will make you connect, he disconnects it with your mind. Wondering. Thoughts. Things that are not even relevant. Even in school. You go to school. The teacher is teaching. If, you're, if your mind is wondering... Let me use school as an example. Let's say the teacher says we're gonna have a, a quiz, a quick quiz after this um this uh what's it called? This 30 minutes lecture. Focus. And everybody's focusing on the quiz, right? But you that 30 minutes, all of a sudden you start thinking of how you will pass uh, like some things that don't really matter. Or maybe you had an issue with your husband and you're thinking of that issue. Wow, somebody just sent me money in Nigeria. Wow, God bless you. I'm afraid to open the message because it might turn off my video. God bless you. I don't know if you're watching. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, like, the teacher told you to focus. He says in 30 minutes, I will quiz you guys based on what I just taught you today in the class. And everybody's busy trying to hear everything that comes out of his mouth. And then you, you sit down there all of a sudden. That's when you start thinking of this, your new boyfriend and how you guys are supposed to go out this weekend. At the end of the 30 minutes, when there's an exam, you're going to fail because you don't even know what that man said. <laughs> Help, I shake it. You don't know what he said. You will be like, um, when did he even teach that? He thought it while your thought was wondering. That's how it is with God. If you don't focus, how are you going to be blessed? You will not be blessed. You will not be blessed. Some, some people, some of you, you watch TV, your favorite show. Hey, nobody can distract you from your favorite show. You are so focused. You don't wonder in anything. In fact, if people are even talking to you, I'm like that. When I'm watching some shows like this, my mother will be calling my name 50 times. I don't even hear they will say, ah, this one is lost. She can't do two things at the same time. I shut everybody out. Like, I don't want to miss one single sentence from any... In fact, I even have the caption on the TV. Meaning, I'm hearing, plus I'm still reading the caption. Because I don't want to miss nothing from this show. I even have the rewind But You know, we have this thing. We have to, we can rewind it. DVR or whatever. I still rewind it. I heard it though, but I still want to hear some parts. Because it's so good. I rewind it. My mother, my father, they know me in this house. Even my younger sister is like that. When we are watching our favorite show, if you like, you break your head. We don't know. We're not. That's the kind of undivided attention that God wants. But we don't have that kind of undivided attention when we're in His presence. That's when we're thinking of so many things. But when we're watching our favorite show, hey, we know word for word what's coming out of their mouth. We can even recite it when it's done. We can say exactly what they said. But when you come to God's stuff, even when you're reading Bible, your mind is wandering. The teacher is preaching in church. You're wondering. You can't say word for word what, what the topic is. You don't even know the topic. You're like, 
was there a topic? <laughs> they ask you what's today's message topic. You're like, um, was there a topic? Oh, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> your your thought was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> the devil has succeeded in making sure you don't know the topic. The devil has succeeded in making sure you don't really know the message for that day. <laughs> but you, you will not say, you say, don't worry, next week I'll write it down. Next week will come. He will make your mind wonder again. You will go to church for one year. You don't even have any notes of any full message. Because during the whole time they were, he came there about say to him. During the whole time that the pastor was preaching for one year, your thoughts were wondering. But if that was um, your favorite TV show, hey, hey, K -K -K -K, you don't even need to write it down. You remember everything they said <laughs> because your mind did not wonder for one second. Anything of the world is so easy for you to focus and remember and know. But when it comes to the things of God, the devil is so crafty. He knows what he's doing. He, he does it on purpose and you don't really pay attention to it until it's too late. So when I was, yes, I was there yesterday praying, the Holy Spirit was telling me, he was like, I shouldn't do that. I was speaking in tongues heavily. All of a sudden, it's like something came to my mind. I don't even know what came to my mind. Like I was thinking of that. It's like, why are you thinking of that? You should be focused on this prayer. Don't do that. Don't you know that's a tool of the devil to distract you from connecting? Because sometimes you may be so connected. And all of a sudden, your thoughts will go somewhere. And you that is so connected, your body is on fire. You are everything. Before you know it. You are disconnected and then you have to try to connect again like spirit it's the devil it's the devil because when you connect so much he knows that he's losing you when you connect so much he knows you're about to destroy his kingdom you, he knows what how powerful your connection is once you are fully connected so he will do anything to make you lose connection you understand what I'm saying? Just like when I do videos sometimes and I'm praying so much, the prayer is too powerful and all of a sudden you see me that I'm disconnected. And then I'll come back to come and restart that, that whole momentum again. It's, it's the devil. He knows what he's doing. Maybe something bad is, that, is happening where he is. Your, your, your prayer is destroying things. So it's like, you know what, you know what? Hey, you spirit of um, wandering thoughts. Go, 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 go to her, go to her. Let her think of her. Let her think of her immigration right now. Let her think of her rent. Make her think of that rent now, now. Make her think of that rent now. And all of a sudden, boom, your rent appears to you. You're like, oh, Lord, how am I going to pay for this rent? You were seriously praying. You were connecting, but now you... You disconnected because you're thinking of your rent. And the devil has succeeded. It will be like, oh, thank God. This girl wants to destroy us today. Kai, thank you. You spirit of uh, this thing. I'm going to promote you. You did a good job. Keep on her. Keep on her. Make sure she wanders throughout the whole service. Make sure her thought is wandering throughout the whole service. And throughout the whole service, you can't connect. Before you know, you start looking at your time again. You're like, okay, it's time for us to go. This man has been preaching since. But if you stay, give them undivided attention. You will understand what the pastor is saying. You are like, yes, it's so true. You are so right. Pastor, that is true. Yes, it's true. Hey, devil, I bind you. You will not get me anymore. Because your undivided attention is there. If somebody asks you, how was church? Oh, it was awesome. What was the message about? It was about this. You will break it down easily. You will go word for word. But you will even remember all the examples the pastor gave. You will remember the scriptures even without writing them down. Because your undivided attention was given. I don't know why the Holy Spirit wanted me to say this, but the way God is using me to bless people is for the little things that people don't even see as relevant. Like, who would think wandering thoughts is a, is, is a, is a, is a big deal? Somebody may, may say, I beg, that one don't mean nothing. It is a big deal. If they're doing deliverance, oh, let me give an example. You may be in church and pastor may say, Everybody that needs um, fruit of the womb, come to the stage, come to the whatever, come out. And because at that time you, you are not focused on the man, you, cut, you, you tune yourself out of what the pastor is saying. You are probably thinking of how you are going to go to work tomorrow. And when he said the fruit of the womb, and you really need fruit of the womb. Actually, that's probably why you came to that church. Because they say fruit of the womb, and you are wondering, your thought is wondering, you didn't come out with them. And you didn't know that the women standing out there because of the reason you came to the church. By the time you will realize that's what they are praying for, they are done praying. The devil has successfully made sure that you do not go out for the reason you came to church. 
at that point that he knows they're about to call people for that problem that's the time he will make your thoughts wonder what sometimes people are people are looking at you sometimes so this thing i'm telling you is serious you could be sitting with somebody eh? the person is paying attention though but the person is not there you have to even you call their name ngozi ngozi did you hear what he said ngozi did you hear what he said ngozi you have to tap them ngozi did you hear what he said he said what 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 did he say uh -uh. what happened to you i thought you were listening oh yeah i was but something is um something you know something was troubling my mind so you didn't hear what the man said no i didn't hear what did he say the person was looking at the man the person sat beside you you, thought, you were thinking they were listening <laughs> the person was gone <laughs> lost in their thoughts like and maybe the person was trying to tell you did you hear what he said because that thing is for you that thing he said is for you that thing you were telling me about but she didn't hear it because the devil really made sure you don't hear it <laughs> so you can be in church you can go to church you can be in a gathering and you won't be blessed because of wandering thoughts hey shake it you weren't there for the reason to be blessed but the devil will say well since i couldn't stop you from going there i'm gonna find another way i'll find another way to make sure you don't you don't get blessed so you will be there but you won't be there i will make it happen that you will be there physically but i will make sure you are not there so you you will tell people i'm going to church i went to church da, 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 da. but you, you were not really there you were teleported or you are how did they talk this thing you were lifted spiritually to your house or <laughs> maybe you're in your village you know how you are sitting somewhere <laughs> they think you're there you, you know there's some people you, you tap them like the example i gave you have to tap them for them to come back they have traveled miles <laughs> they are back in africa but they are sitting there in america with you in that church but they have traveled <laughs> to their village they are not there you have to tap them to bring them back or you have to shout their name and they will not say hey what now what what happened to you now i've been talking to you didn't hear i didn't hear please i was thinking of something they were lost the holy spirit said i have to talk about this a lot of you guys are saying it's true it's true so maybe you've been you've experienced it and one of the reasons he said one of the reasons why people are like this is because of worries he said worries worries people worry too much they worry a lot about things jesus has been telling us not to worry but people still worry if you don't worry about anything like me i'm not gonna lie to you oh, since i started preaching i don't worry about nothing i was just doing this video a lady actually this lady lives in nigeria three days ago or two days ago she messaged me she said please what is your account details i want to i'm like i don't know her name i've never seen her comment on my video she's not my friend on facebook i went through her page she's a real person she lives in nigeria i was like um what do you want to do she said she wants to sow into my ministry that i watch you all the time but i never comment i was like um um she said i'm not a fraud star i'm a real person don't worry don't be scared i was scared to receive money me that like money somebody's trying to give me money I was scared to receive money. I was like, um, because I've never seen that name in any of my videos. She's not my friend. And all of a sudden, she wants to send me money. And today, as I'm doing this video, she just sent money. Big money. I can't even say it. It's so big in Nigeria. I gave her a Nigerian account to put it. It's a lot of money in Nigeria, I think. I don't worry. I didn't ask for her to send me anything. I don't even know the woman. The woman was even begging me, she said, don't be worried, don't be scared, I'm not a fraudster. I just love your ministry. I may not comment, but I'm always watching you. Me that like money, I'm refusing to give her my account number. I say, hey, who is this? Oh, she has so many pictures on her page, so she's not fake. And she just sent me a message. She said, you talked about me today. Oh, I don't know if she's watching. Maybe she's watching the, mess the video. She's sending me a message. I'm scared to open my messages while I'm on this video because you know how this my video does. Before you know, it will disconnect. So I don't really worry, but some of us, instead of us to pray to God and leave it there, we come to church or we come to where we're going to get blessed. We start worrying about money. Oh God, when will I get this money now? When will I get this money? You're worried. You don't want to pray anymore. They are praying. They are praying. Financial blessings, financial miracle. Instead of you to say amen and put your mind into it and say today I will be blessed. You're like, 
I beg, I don't tire for this financial blessing. Every time, every time. Uh, they, I beg, and you start thinking about your bills, calculating your bills in your head at that point. Your head is a calculator at that time. You are thinking, oh, rent is 2000 Phone. You have missed that prayer. What if there were angels sent out at that time to bless people? To bless people that need financial blessing at that time. They will see that you are disconnected. You are not really there. They will pass you and go and give somebody else the blessing. I don't know why you guys are laughing. What's so funny? Because I say I was afraid to collect money. <laughs> you know me now. I'm always real. I have a lot of scriptures. Let me post the scriptures. So that we can read the scriptures. We wait on you. Somebody said, look younger with a wig on. God bless you guys. Thank you. Okay, so the first scripture that I have. I have so many scriptures. The first scripture is Jeremiah 21, 29, 11 to 13. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Are you listening to this thing? He said, I know the thoughts. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. So God is thinking good thoughts of us. Of peace, not evil. To give us an expe expected end. But when we're in front of him, when we're in his presence... What thoughts are we thinking towards him? Are we really thinking about him while we're there? Or are we thinking about our problems at that time? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, our thoughts, are our thoughts focused on him? <laughs> or our thoughts, are they focused on our problems at that time? Or are they focused on the devil? Or are they focused on how we're going to sin? Because he, he says he knows his own thoughts that he's thinking towards us. Do you know your own thoughts you're thinking towards him when you're in his presence? Hakarebo shikandebo santaha. He says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Now, I'm going to ask you, what thoughts do you think towards him when you are in his presence? Ask yourself. When you are in the presence of God, do you think of good thoughts? Oh Lord, I love you. I just love being in your presence. I worship you. Do you think those thoughts or you're like, you're there physically, but your thought is like, oh, how am I going to go to that party tomorrow? What thought is that? You see what I'm saying? Like, he says he knows the thoughts. The reason I put that is to ask you whether do you know your own thoughts that you think towards him because God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. <laughs> hey, he said thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. He said then then shall you call upon me and ye shall then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. See, he says you will seek him and you will find him when you search for him with all your heart. Not, not, your, undivided, not your divided attention. See, you will find him only when you search with all your heart. So meaning your mind, that be your heart, cannot be in another place while you're physically there. You won't find him at that time because... <laughs> it's, the Bible says with all your heart not with some part of your heart and the other part is thinking of your boyfriend or thinking of your bill you will seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart you're focused and you're searching him with everything in you not divided attention not divided thoughts not divided hearts like your focus lord i'm looking for you i seek you now i want to find you i'm not thinking of anything else but you right now it's you that i'm thinking of right now i will i will not my thoughts will not wander at this minute because i want to focus on you right now and then you will find him but if you're thinking of him at that time and, and then all of a sudden somebody comes to your mind and you're like oh i forgot to call this girl oh okay lord i'm back here <laughs> You won't find him. <laughs> you won't find him. Your thoughts are everywhere. Your heart is not really here. Your heart is all over the place. Your <laughs> he says he knows his thoughts. He's focused on you, looking at you while you're praying. He's not thinking of anything but you. But are you thinking of him? Or are you thinking of so many things? That means you're not ready to because at that time that your 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 thought is divided. What if at that time he appears to you? You won't see him. 
Because you're really not there. You're there physically, but you're not there. So when he appears, say, Jesus may be standing right in front of you, but your mind is somewhere else, so you won't even see Jesus until they, Jesus will get tired and say, you know what, let me go, she's not ready. You have to focus. 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 Keep your eyes, your mind, everything on Jesus. Undivided attention. So you cannot miss, so that way you don't miss anything. You get everything. It's just like if you and Jesus are sitting down and Jesus is telling you things. Are you going to be thinking of something else? You may not get the whole thing he's telling you. You will get maybe two sentences and you will miss six sentences. <laughs> you won't get the full picture. You have to give him all your, your heart. You're like everything in you has to focus on him. Your undivided attention. The devil knows this. So the devil throws things at you at that time. Things that are not even needed. Like... Things that you're not even supposed to be thinking of at that time will just come to your mind all of a sudden. You resist it right there. You say, you know what? Out of my mind right now. And focus again. 1 Peter 5, 7-8. It says, give all your worries and cares to God. For he cares for you. Listen to this part. Give all your worries and cares to God. For he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. Do you hear what it says? Stay alert. Stay alert, meaning your mind, everything, your thoughts need to be alert. Like, you need to know that you cannot be distracted at this very minute. I remember when, I remember when the first day that um, the, our, my apostle prayed for me to speak in tongues. I've been wanting to speak in tongues since November 2015 that I gave my life to God. I didn't speak in tongues till... August of the 20th of August the following year so when I went to my apostles church it was Holy Ghost service and he was like okay this is the time for the Holy Ghost communion he said at this point everybody needs to stay focused avoid distraction everybody stay focused so we were all there focused I was more focused than anybody you better believe it I was so focused <laughs> I was so focused and all of a sudden a lady at the back seat was under the anointing and that lady from the back seat the anointing grabbed the lady and dropped her in front of me that was in the choir place all the way in the front distraction and she had a wide skirt so when she fell all her, her body was open and we had to try to cover up her skirt distraction Remember he said stay focused so that the Holy Spirit can locate you and you can speak in tongues. Before you know, major distraction in front of me. I was like, oh Lord, I have missed it again. Oh Jesus. I got upset but I didn't show it. I just kind of covered the lady up and went to sit somewhere else. Luckily, Holy Spirit told the Apostle to come meet me and lay hands on me. And that's how he laid hands on me. I started speaking in tongues. But why did he say you should stay focused? Because he knows that at that very minute... If you're not focused, the Holy Spirit may pass you by and you won't speak in tongues. But if you focus on Jesus and you say, Lord, I really need this gift of tongues. I really want to speak in tongues. Please give it to me. You will pay attention and before you know you're... Da -da 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 -da. But if you're like, Lord, I want to speak in tongues. And then you're like, oh, but I have to go to the store from here. Oh, hey, how much do I have in my purse? Oh, I don't even think I carried enough money. You missed it. Hey. <laughs> You just missed it. <laughs> you're not going to speak in tongues that day because you're not focused. The time you were thinking about going to the store, what if it was that time the Holy Spirit was about to come and they see that your mind is somewhere else? You don't miss it. You have to wait for the next time. This is the devil. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. At that point, why are you thinking of store? How important is the store at that time? What, what relevance is the store? How can store help you in the church? Like, why did that thought even come at that time? Or why are you thinking of your husband at that time? Or how are you thinking of your, your best friend and how you guys will gossip at that time? What what value did that add to that? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it says get give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. The reason he gave me this, he said that one of the reasons why people's thoughts are always wondering is because they're always worrying. Worrying, and it's true. A lot of people worry about so many things. So when you see them, they're all worries. They come and visit you. They look smoothy. They're worried. They can't focus. You're even praying for them. 
Like somebody yesterday, she wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. She wanted to do all of that stuff. I gave her one link to go read and whatever. I say, how are you feeling? She say, I feel good, but I'm still tense. Like I feel tense. I say, I say that feeling is not good. You feel tense, meaning you have so much things you're worrying. She say, yeah, because my situation right now is only a miracle that can help. So I'm just worried about it. I say, I don't pray for people that worry because even after I pray, you will still worry, meaning you won't believe that the prayer is working and I don't think it's gonna work. She said, well, I'm gonna try to stop worrying. I said, no, it's not, you're gonna try. You're gonna cast that spirit of worry out of you right now before I pray for you. Because I don't want to pray for you and then you will still go and be tense, you'll still be worried. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He say, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He say, stay alert. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. devour. Remember where I was telling that the devil is always walking to and fro, looking for where to cause trouble. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He's looking for someone to play with their mind. He's looking for someone to make their thoughts wonder. He's always looking. <laughs> and once he sees that your own thought is available to be played with, he's going to play with yours. But if you're alert, you guard your heart, you're like, uh uh, nobody's going to play with my heart today. I'm focused on this prayer. I'm focused on this prayer. He will skip you and go to somebody else. Oh, I love the Bible. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. It says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Some of you, you come to church, you're just worried about food. You're worried about how you're going to feed your children. But you're in church. You are, you are in a place where you can ask God to help you. Instead of you praying, you are worrying. <laughs> it says, whether, it says, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more important, more than food? And your body more than clothing? He said, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in burns. For your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? That worrying that you're worrying. Will it add a single moment to your life? If anything, it will take, it will take moments out of your life. It will make you even sick. And before you know, you have high blood pressure. Or what did that thing come? That thing that comes from too much worrying. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Oh, I want to go to the store to buy this. What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts. Listen, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. That's what unbelievers think of. Their thoughts are wandering every day, thinking of these things. You are not an unbeliever. You are a believer. Your thoughts should not wander and be thinking about these things. Unless maybe you are really not a believer yet. Maybe you are an unbeliever. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So when you come to the presence of God or when you're praying to God or when you're listening to the word of God, don't allow your thoughts to wander on the things that unbelievers are supposed to be wondering about. You're not one of them. You already know that yours is taken care of. You're in the place where it can be taken care of. Don't let the devil mess with your thoughts at that time. Your thoughts cannot be dominated by that because it's a, it's a way that the devil uses to cut you off of your blessing, to cut you off from connecting. And then you will not even feel like you went to church. You go home, you still feel empty. Because your thoughts was all over the place. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, I love that, seek the kingdom of God. You guys know that's one of my favorite scriptures. When you are in the presence of God, seek him. 100%. Let it be about him and him only. When I'm here on this video doing videos, I'm focused. 
If I'm not focused, you guys would know because you're all paying attention to me. So if my thoughts are wandering, you would know. But I'm focused. And when I'm worshiping, I'm focused. I connect really fast. Hey, Kahehe. I connect really fast. Hey. I don't let anything take my mind off of connecting. Because I've seen some people, they are struggling to connect. Somebody says, um, somebody told me the other day, she said, um, whenever you are doing your video, you will tell us to focus and don't think of anything and focus and focus. And I don't know how to focus. Like, I don't know. I don't even feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know how to focus. I say, what do you mean by you don't know how to focus? Whatever it is, that's your problem. Stop thinking about it. She said, well, that's the thing. I just, I don't know. There's a difference from someone that doesn't worry about things and someone that worries all the time. The one that doesn't worry will always be light. There will, there will not be this heavy load that they are carrying. But the one that is always worried, there's heavy load. It's always hard to get their attention even for one minute because that load is always pressing them down. And before you know, they are thinking of that load. They are thinking of all those things. But the other person may even have more problems than you that they are dealing with. But they don't worry about it because they know that worrying is not going to take care of it. They just... I've seen people that when you see them, eh, they look, they're the happiest people in the world. But if they tell you they don't even have one dollar in their account, you won't believe it. And then some people, just one small problem. They are looking like life is over for them. Ah, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh. This life is not easy for me. Oh, you are worrying. The person you are telling probably has not eaten for two days. But she's just happy. She's not going to let anything steal her joy. Do you see what I'm saying? So let go of these worries because it's not going to add, it's not going to add any moment to your life. If anything, it will just stress you. And then it makes you feel, when you worry in the presence of God, you're worried and you're wondering, your thoughts are wondering. You're making God feel like he's not capable of taking care of you. Like God will be like, why is this girl worrying? She worries all the time. She's thinking of all these things too much. Even in my presence, she's worried. That means she doesn't trust that I can really take care of her. Do you see what I'm saying? And it doesn't make God happy. God doesn't like that. God wants us to really trust him that he got us, especially when we're in his presence. How can you be in church and you're praying and your mind is thinking of your bills, but you're praying to the almighty God that takes care of all bills, but your mind is still thinking of bills. You're looking at God like maybe he's not really going to help you. You're like, I don't even trust this God that I'm praying to. Let me just, I beg, let me think of my own way of paying this bill because I don't think this bill will be paid though. That's how you are feeling. And it's not right because you're in his presence. Give him all your attention. Focus on him. And he will do it for you. If he sends his angel at that time to come to you because you're focused on him, you will get your blessing. But if he sends his angels and you're focused on how you will take care of the situation yourself, the angel will skip you. He will go to the next person that is ready and believe that God can help them. The devil has succeeded in making you wander off. It says, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Are you hearing? Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for the day. I keep talking about these worries. The Holy Spirit is always talking about worries too, because that's one big thing that a lot of people deal with. Like, <laughs> they're always worried about something. Today they're worried about their light bill. Tomorrow they're worried about their, their rent. Tomorrow, Next morning they're worried about their job. The next day they are worried about their church. Oh, the next day they are worried about their friend. Every day is worry. Worry makes them not to enjoy their life. Worry makes them not to focus on anything. Worries, worries, worries. I pray that God will help us. I pray that God will help us. From today, we will not worry anymore. We will not have this wandering thoughts of a thing anymore. In the name of Jesus. When we come to his presence, we will be focused. We will pay attention. We will not let the devil distract us in any way. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of wandering thoughts. I destroy them right now with the Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus. You will stay focused. You will stay focused. You will focus on Jesus. Whenever you are in his presence, all you will think of is Jesus in the name of Jesus.
when the devil tries to come and make your thoughts wander you will resist him and he will flee from you in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for this message I pray that you are blessed and I hope that you will change from now on you will not let worries hinder you anymore you will not let your thoughts be wandering all over the place in the name of Jesus amen God bless you I love you.